For 2,000 years, this forest hid the secrets of one of the most important battles in antiquity. Here, a band of unruly barbarians challenged three legions of the mighty Roman army. Now archaeologists are piecing together the fragments of that fateful day. Hello, I'm John Rhys Davis. Join us at the site of a massacre that shook the Roman Empire, next on Archaeology. the stuff of legends. The great Augustus Caesar hopes to push the Roman Empire beyond the boundaries of the civilized world. His faithful commander, Publius Quintilius Varus, is inexperienced and untested in the field of conflict. Varus and his army expect little in the way of resistance. They are tragically mistaken. Armed with spears and shields, a force of German tribesmen gather to face the might of Rome. At their head, a daring young chieftain by the name of Arminius. It was one of the bloodiest battles of antiquity. When the slaughter was finished, 20,000 of Rome's finest lay dead or dying in the mud. So great was the shock that for years afterwards, Augustus is said to have beaten his head on a door shouting, Quinctilius Varus, give me back my legions. Although the massacre left an indelible mark on history, the site of the battle disappeared in the tangle of an ancient forest. Today, archaeologists are reaping an unexpected harvest in a swatch of German farmland, hundreds of Roman artifacts. Have they found the site of Rome's defeat, the source of Caesar's nightmare? On a hill overlooking the city of Detmold in western Germany, an imposing statue immortalizes the young hero who stood against Rome. While the Romans mourned their defeat, the Germans celebrated it in myth and legend. But details of the battle seem lost forever to the passage of time. In the first century AD, Germany was a trackless land of mountains and forests, inhabited by tribes of warlike barbarians. Fiercely independent, they looked on the encroaching Romans with suspicion and dread. The century before, the great Julius Caesar had doubled the size of the Roman Empire. After subduing the Mediterranean, he turned northward and conquered Gaul, establishing a stronghold on the west bank of the Rhine. To consolidate Caesar's gains, the Emperor Augustus extended the frontier to the Danube. Next he annexed the territory between the Rhine and the Elbe. An invasion seemed only a matter of time. But the Germans were ill-prepared. They needed a leader, someone charismatic who could unite them in a common cause, someone who could rally a force strong enough to confront a highly disciplined military machine. The young Arminius, only 27 years old, had unique credentials. Although a German chieftain, he was well trained in Roman tactics. As a Roman citizen, he had served in the army and sworn allegiance to the emperor until Augustus made a fateful decision. He named Pilius Quinctilius Varus governor of Germany. An aristocrat, Varus was also arrogant and tactless. His presence on German soil was all Arminius needed to spark a rebellion and unite the tribes. In 9 AD, Arminius seized his opportunity. He attacked Varus and his legions. After three days of fighting, the battle was over. 
20,000 men, 10,000 camp followers were virtually annihilated. Unable to face the shame of such a catastrophe, Varus and his lieutenants committed suicide. Their voices silenced, Rome's most humiliating defeat in centuries faded into history. With few witnesses to recount the disaster, the whereabouts of the killing field also slipped away. For 2,000 years, no one has been certain exactly where the battle was fought. The search to find it would become one of the great detective stories of archaeology. It begins in the 16th century when a manuscript written by the Roman historian Tacitus was discovered in a German monastery. Tacitus was the first to identify the Teutoburg forest, some 200 square miles of what is today gently rolling hills and woodlands. Over the years, Roman antiquities began to turn up in several different locations, but few associated them with the battle. Then, in 1987, an amateur archaeologist prospecting on a northern edge of the forest uncovered an unusual cache of new artifacts. The discovery attracted the attention of the Museum of Cultural History in nearby Osnabrück. The excavation, located at the foot of Kalkreiser Mountain, has yielded hundreds of tiny fragments, each a clue that here something dramatic occurred. After years of painstaking analysis, Chief Archaeologist Suzanne Wilbers Rost and her team have pieced together the uniform of a Roman soldier and the weapons he carried. We found, for example, this hook to fasten the epaulets of a chainmail coat. It mentions a certain Marcus Ius of the first cohort of Fabricius. The first cohort was the elite unit of a Roman legion. The find is hard evidence that heavily armed infantry were present in the area. This javelin clamp was used to attach the iron to the wooden shaft of a Roman javelin, a very long weapon. The base section of the javelin could be driven firmly into the ground. The sandals were very important. They were made of leather and had iron cleats in the soles. The helmet had a plume holder on which plumes could be fixed on special occasions. A Roman dinar, a silver coin. I don't know if you've already seen this. Look, there is a galley on it, a ship. Down here you can see the oars. We have several of this type. That fits into the context. But it's a rarity on this site. On this excavation, we've only found six or seven silver coins. These scattered relics of a Roman army bear mute testimony to an ancient conflict. But is it the infamous battle of 9 AD? 